In this video, I'm going to be showing how you can save hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, making up your own wiring loom to replace those brittle wires, cracked sheathing. We're going to be making up a Dejectronic wiring loom for our 1975 280 SL Mercedes. The eagle-eyed amongst you might recognize that this section of wiring loom is not actually from a 280 SL, it's actually from a 280 CE. And I think what somebody has done in their wisdom is change the engine of our car to that of a 280 CE because they wanted to change it from a manual to an automatic. And the advantage of the 280 CE loom is you can actually unplug it in the engine bay and just unplug this injector section, whereas on the 280 SL, it's one continuous loom that goes all the way back to the ECU. I'm going to attempt to remake this section of wiring loom without destroying the existing section, because I may need to use that if I muck it up. The best place to get the rubber boots, plugs, crimps, the ECU plug, bracket, seals, etc., is this company here, Repro Parts. Now, we mentioned them before. They're based in Germany, and the parts they supply are made in Germany. My experience of them has been excellent. They're really good communication. Things are sent out super cheaply, and there's no, if you're in the UK, no customs charges, etc. They not only sell the crimps for the um, fuel injectors, but they also sell all the plugs, etc. for the ECU. So Repro Parts in Germany is the place to get that. They also sell various other bits and pieces like these four pole connectors. Now, unfortunately, they only sell the female version of that. This here is the male version and it plugs into the female version. And the female version pins are hollow and plug into there. So we bought those in error because what we actually need is the male version. Luckily, we managed to source one of these male fittings from a company called Pantry Trading, and they sell quite a lot of obscure Mercedes parts. Part number is 009-545-5228. So what we'll use is that from Pantry Trading, and then we'll use the back section from Repro Parts. And as for the pins, you'll be pleased to know they are still available from Mercedes. I think they're just about one or two pounds each. That's the part number there, 001545-3826. When it comes to the actual cable you're going to be using to make the wiring loom, you want to be using something called FLRY cable. Now, the FL means automotive low voltage cable. The R is reduced thickness of insulation, i.e. what's on the outside of the wire. And the Y means that the insulation is made out of PVC. The FLR wire comes in two varieties generally, either the A or the B, and the A is just a regularly stranded conductor, and the B consists of thinner wires, more flexible with a shorter minimum bending radius, and that's what we'll be using. So just to confirm, this is low voltage wire designed for minus 40 to 105 degrees Celsius. For the purposes of this Dejectronic harness, you can either use 0.75mm thickness wire or you can use 1mm thickness wire. We started doing this project with 0.75, but in actual fact, the 1mm is a 32-strand cable. It is slightly closer to the thickness of the original, so we will not be using 0.75, which we got from this company here, or Protec in Germany, we will be using the one millimeter cable from this company in the UK, Auto Electric Supplies. Not only is it significantly cheaper, but um, you can probably get all the sheathing from this company as well. And you may be interested to know that this company here also sells the crimps for a significantly lower price than I've seen anywhere else. Another thing to mention about auto electric supplies is they have all the correctly colored wires, for example, yellow with a red stripe, whereas these guys here in Germany only had the yellow um, and they sell wire by the meter as well, which is what you're going to need. AES have a great catalog. Well worth getting that if you're going to be doing any kind of electrical work on any of your cars. The wiring loom or harness you're making calls for tape. You need to use non-adhesive vinyl harness tape or non-adhesive cotton cloth tape. But as I say, this particular um, wiring harness doesn't use any tape. It just uses sheathing and it uses three types. First of all, here you've got expandable braided cable sleeving. And this is six to nine millimeters. And then you've got 
PVC wiring harning, harness sleeving. And this expandable um, braided cable sleeving is amazing stuff. When you first look at it, it doesn't look like it's going to be thick enough to hold all the wires, but when you squeeze it together, you can see it expands. To stop this fraying at the end, you ideally want to cut it with a pair of hot scissors or a hot knife. When you come to actually make up your cable, you can see here what they have done at the factory is poke the injector wires sort of halfway through that and then just tied this off or melted this off. This particular harness here has this PVC PVC sheathing on it and it has two types. It has this type here, which is a seven mil bore. And then on the thinner wires here, it has a five mil. And the, one of the reasons we're remaking this is you can see that over time, this sheathing just cracks. And when it starts to crack here at the ends of wires, you will start to actually see the insulation on the wire itself cracking. So this here has lost all its flexibility. It's almost, if you bent these wires, you would almost crack that sheathing. So we'll be replacing all the sheathing and all the wires to end up with a nice flexible harness, just like it was when it came out of the factory. This braided sheathing here and also this PVC vinyl sheathing isn't completely sealed. If you needed to completely seal this sheathing you would put some heat shrink over the end of it. If you are attempting to undo the sheathing on a wiring loom a good tip is to use something called a stitch picker and that will slip underneath here and cut the sheathing without the cutting the wires. If you try and get wires uh, or scissors underneath there you risk nicking the wires you don't want to do that so get yourself a stitch picker like that. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is cut a length of our braided sheathing here and thread in all the wires. We've already worked out what colors we've got. This is a six cylinder car and on each plug, there's gonna be a brown earth wire and a particular color. In this particular car, we've got a green, a red and green, a yellow, a yellow and red, a white and a gray. So each of the six cylinders has a different color. First thing we're going to do is heat up a blade and then we're just going to cut a section off the end here. Stop that freeing. To make our life a little bit easier, I'm going to use a standard car tire valve cap and I'm going to put that over the end of the wires and just tape that around there. So when we push this through our braided sheath here, the wires won't catch on the sheath. There we go, we just taped that cap on there. And now it's just a matter of threading this through the sleeve. Now, before we do so, this section of the sleeve is much longer than we need it. And we're gonna trim it down, not to the exact same size, because an easy mistake to make is to measure this when it's this thickness against the harness and then cut it to length, not realizing that when it expands, obviously the length of the cable is going to shorten slightly. So we're gonna cut it slightly longer than we need it. We've cut this sheathing to length and now in theory, it should just be a matter of threading this through. It's nice and easy because we've got that valve cap on the end. We've kind of got to expand it up at the front and then just push the wire through and then take the wire back if that makes any sense. The next thing we have to do is slide on this piece of sheathing here. Now that goes over the white wire, the grey wire and also the yellow and the red wire and there's also gonna be all the earth wires going through that. Once again, we're gonna measure this. This piece of braiding actually goes underneath here. So we need a piece that goes underneath and at this section here, it's gonna be expanded to be thick enough to encompass all of these wires and this PVC sheathing. So remember to cut it longer than you need it. Incidentally, if you try cutting this with normal scissors and then you try forcing wires through, it'll separate like this. So you must cut it with a hot knife to stop that happening. So we're just gonna bend these wires like this and tuck them down here about an inch. Same with this one here. Bend it, tuck it down there about an inch. And then we are going to slide this sheathing down 
we're going to try and get this sheathing to go inside this sheathing here. Next up, we want to take two of the earth wires that we've cut for the longest two plugs here at the end of the loom, and we want to bend them so that the short part here of the um, wire is long enough to replicate this here. It doubles back on itself. They are going to be pushed down into here by about a centi uh, sorry, an inch or so. We are going to be using shrink wrap on the ends of our connections. It's important to get that shrink wrap on before you start putting soldering the plugs on, etc. Otherwise, you won't be able to slide it on. We're going to have a go at soldering on our plug connections. So first of all, we're just going to open this up and have a look and see what color goes where. The tops of these plugs are just a clip on and if you're very careful you can just snap the top off without cracking it. So making sure we've got the plug the right way up, we've got a grey going to the top left and a white going to the top right. Those are going to be cut slightly longer. We've got our two greens going to the bottom left and our two yellows or yellow and a red stripe going to the bottom right. For our soldering, we're going to be using this Milwaukee soldering iron, which we've used before in a couple of projects. When the light goes solid green, the tip is hot enough to solder. We're just going to be using some Draper lead-free solder here. We'll start off stripping the grey wire first. We're going to use the 18 gauge here. Here we're going to twist the greens together. And hopefully that's going to fit nicely in one of our pins. Now, I'm no expert on soldering, but when you solder, you want to be heating the wire at the end here and holding the solder over the top of the pin and the solder will flow down into the pin and along the wires. You don't want to be heating the solder directly onto the soldering iron. That's not the best soldering I've seen, but that's definitely good enough for this job. We just need to snap this cover here on, slide the sheathing back, and then we're going to put a little bit of shrink wrap right at the end. Ideally, you want to heat the shrink wrap with a um, heat gun as opposed to a lighter so you would avoid melting anything. But unfortunately, I don't have a heat gun here. So we're just going to have to make do with what we've actually got. Now we have to put the crimps on. The first thing we're going to do is just cut those two wires to length. When you come to put the crimp in, make sure you put it in the right way round, which is that way round, rather counterintuitively. The crimp should stay there by itself. And then what you do is you just simply click this down, one like that to stop it falling out. There we have a perfect crimp. Once you've done the two crimps, you want to slide the boot over now. I'm going to put a little bit of washing up liquid here just to lubricate that because these boots, when they're new, are quite a sticky form of rubber. You could also use a lithium grease or a silicon lube. What you mustn't do is use a petro-based oil like three-in-one oil or engine oil because that will, over time, react with the rubber and cause it to degenerate. The next bit is important. When you come to slide the plug on, just remember the earth wire is on the right and the flat side is at the top. So when you look at the plug, it will slide on like that. It should you just slide and click in. And there we have a perfect boot and crimp. We'll leave it like that so that we can actually put the plugs in when the injectors come back. The last thing we have to do is add on the earth terminal here. And what I've done is I've just temporarily taped all the wires together so they can't move. And unfortunately, there is not a crimping tool big enough for a ring that size. If anybody is watching this and they know of a crimping tool that can crimp much larger rings than that, please let me know. So we're going to try and do it by hand. That 
it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't think that's going anywhere. And what we will do is we'll put a bit of shrink wrap around that now. Last but not least, we've just got to check that we've got all the wires in the right place. And the easiest way to do that is just to set your voltmeter to resistance. This one here beeps when you touch the terminals and then just check that all the earth wires are in the right place and then check that all the colored wires correspond to the correct terminals on the plug as per the loom that you took off the car. Once you've tested that all the wires are in the right place, you'll notice that the original wiring looms have these little rubber bands on telling you which cylinder is which. So my advice would be to put a little bit of masking tape around the wires and actually write the numbers on. So just when you come to fit this, some of these wires are almost exactly the same length. When you come to fit it, you're gonna be absolutely certain that you plug in the right injector into the right wire. I'm gonna finish this video here. I'm really happy the way this wiring harness or loom turned out. We saved hundreds, if not thousands of dollars making it ourselves. And I'm just gonna show you where we got all the various bits from the plugs, the terminals and the wires, etc. As I mentioned before, we got all of our rubber boots, crimps, plastic plugs, four pole plugs from these guys here in Germany. Really excellent company, great communication, and they send stuff out really quickly. If you're based in the UK, these guys here, autoelectricalsupplies.co.uk, are a great place to get cable from. This is where we got our cable from. They do a whole variety of different thicknesses, um, and they sell almost every color you can think of by the meter. Once again, great communication and sent stuff out super quick time. If you're into old cars, whether it's Mercedes or vintage cars, check out these guys here, Vintage Supplies. This is where we got our cable sheathing from originally. They um, are not too far away from Bristol. We went to see them, super duper company, really interesting. They've got so many obscure products on their website, the little C-rings that you'll need for injectors, etc., springs, brass fittings, you name it, they've pretty much got everything. And last but not least, if you cannot be bothered to make your own wiring loom up, you can go along to these guys in Germany, Kurth Classic Auto Parts, and they will make you a loom for your 450SL, 350SL, whatever it is. Um, you will save yourself hundreds of dollars if you do it yourself, but as I say, these are professionals and sometimes some jobs are best left to the professionals.